use of intraaortic balloon counterpulsation in acute myocardial infarction complicated by cardiogenic shock is currently a class one recommendation in international guidelines despite limited evidence. IABP Shock 2 is the largest study to date to test the use of IABP in this setting in a randomized manner. 600 patients in cardiogenic shock at sites throughout Germany were randomized to either IABP or conventional optimal medical treatment alone. The primary study endpoint was 30-day um, mortality, what we were looking for, and we had a 39.7% mortality in the IABP arm and a 41.3% mortality in the control arm. And this was not statistically significant with a p-value of 0.69. This is the largest randomized clinical trial which has been performed so far in cardiogenic shock. And unfortunately, this trial was negative, um, showing that the endotic bloomer cannot improve the survival or any of the secondary study endpoints. And this will probably impact guidelines and will probably impact um, the clinical practice. There are many changes in the 2012 guideline, but the three most important ones for practicing doctors are an expanded indication for mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists in patients with systolic heart failure and mild symptoms. The second important new development is a similar expansion of the indication for cardiac resynchronization therapy in patients with milder symptoms as well. And the third new development is an indication for a completely new type of therapy, ivabradine, in patients receiving an ACE inhibitor, a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, and a beta blocker, and who, despite getting evidence-based doses of those treatments, continues to have symptoms and a heart rate of 70 beats per minute or greater. To avoid complications linked to lead implantation, leadless pacemakers and subcutaneous implantable cardiac defibrillators are being actively developed. We are facing a revolutionary technology that has the potential to shock patients out of ventricular fibrillation without implanting a lead and to pace patients in the future without a lead. However, we have to wait until more data are collected, so I would reserve these devices at this point in time for either young patients with a low incidence of ICD therapies over the next couple of years, or to patients who already have had tremendous problems with the venous excess. Renal denervation is a hot issue in the treatment of severe hypertension. The intervention is currently being investigated in the Simplicity 2 trial. 18-month data were reported in Munich. At the end of the six-month endpoint in the initially denervated group, pressure fell by 32 on 12, which was highly significant. Didn't fall at all in the reference population. Then, when the initial group had been followed through to 18 months, the blood pressure fall was exactly the same, 32 on 12. Did the catheter cause any mischief? And in essence, no. Was there any deterioration of renal function? No. Was there any damage to the renal artery wall? No, there was no primary damage to the renal artery wall.